Hogwarts Legacy is a love letter to all Harry Potter fans, or better say Wizarding World fans out there. It's a content rich AAA RPG, it's the ultimate Harry Potter game until now. And when I say that, I really mean it. I have played every possible Harry Potter game on all consoles and formats, you can see my reviews on the channel, I know what I'm talking about. What I love most about this game is that it implements and perfects elements seen in previous games of the Wizarding World franchise, or the Harry Potter franchise. You have dungeons and puzzle sections, you learn spells in a somewhat similar fashion as in the first games, the robe animation when you run is similar to that in the Prisoner of Azkaban game on console. Whether I was in a dungeon or in a free room area, I had flashbacks of older games. Like in the Order of Phoenix and Half-Blood Prince, you roam the castle and do quests for students, and this time it's not annoying and nerve-wracking like in the older games. As big of a fan I am to the Harry Potter franchise, I do admit that it's difficult to find the solution to many of the puzzles in those games. If it would have been easy, I wouldn't have done the full guide on how to solve the puzzles in the Order of Phoenix on the PSP. This time it's much easier to solve puzzles, you have the Revelio spell that highlights stuff you can use in order to progress. Also elements are varied. I rarely felt that I am doing the same thing on repeat. Each quest and side quest felt unique. Sure, some stuff repeats, but overall, the gameplay felt diverse. The game has a great narrative and some side quests were even better than the main quest. The last time I felt this was in The Witcher 3, where every tiny side quest had a great narrative. It's the same here. Everything is worth your time. Content isn't just thrown around for the sake of making the game longer, rather everything feels fine-tuned for you to have an amazing experience. Sure, there are some minor setbacks, like some caves where the devs forgot to put a shortcut to the entrance so you have to roam all the empty holes until you reach the entrance, that was annoying, but aside of some very minor setbacks, the whole experience feels fine-tuned. Like any RPG that deserves a masterpiece status, the game is chock full of content. Sure, I understand the disappointment of not having Quidditch, I have it too, but I still can't hold it against the game. Even if I also would have liked to have, for example, the chess game you had in the Order of Phoenix, but aside of the wants of the community, the game itself offers a lot. You can capture magical beasts and care for them, brush them, feed them, breed them, play with them. You can collect a number of 13 different magical beasts in the game. You can brew potions, you can grow your own plants, you can harvest materials from your magical beasts in order to enhance your clothing. You can buy stuff from different merchants, you can use potions and plants in combat and if we are in combat, I didn't expect it to be this amazing. When I saw the early gameplay videos of the combat, I, it, it didn't impress me, but once I got to play the game, it grew on me. When the character casts spells, it's like he or she is dancing. Your character is elegant and gracious, but also dangerous. The more you level up and progress, you can equip better clothing and better stats and you can invest your talent points in some devastating powers. Once you have the combinations best suited for your playstyle, you get the feeling that you become invincible. Especially if you play the game on easy, you will feel like in Doom, that you aren't trapped with your enemies but rather your enemies are trapped with you. You will feel how powerful you are, especially if you learn the three forbidden spells, Avada Kedavra, Crucio and Imperio. With all these spells you will be able to ignite your enemies, freeze them, throw them around, flip them, slam them to the ground, combos are especially satisfying to pull off. The visuals are stunning during combat, you can parry and stun enemies, you can throw objects at them, have ultimate attacks, the controls are snappy and feel just right, the experience you have during combat is truly magical. It's a bummer that you get only 26 spells, I mean Elder Ring has more which is not a game about the spells, but anyway, those 26 spells you get are fine-tuned and offer an experience that feels magical. The game starts off promisingly with a stunning cinematic that introduces you to the premise of the story. You are the new student at Hogwarts who has a mysterious power that could change the fate of the Wizarding World. You can see and wield ancient magic. 
You start as a fifth year and have to use your genius to reach your fellow colleagues. You get to choose your house and here I want to tell you a tiny detail. Houses differ mostly as appearance and common rooms. The only real difference you will feel across houses is that each one has its unique common room, specific clothing for each house that you can wear only while you are a student of that house and specific dialogue options that don't alter the story in any way, they are just different from house to house. And each house has a specific set of unique side quests. But those side quests are really just one or two. The coolest set of side quests is that of Hufflepuff. You get to visit the famous prison Azkaban. But aside of those few side quests, the game is pretty much the same, no matter which house you choose. But even if it sounds disappointing, the storyline is well written and captivating. Or at least it is in my opinion, tastes differ. The world surrounding you is incredible too, the game manages to expand the lore. It even has a student that gives you quiz questions of Harry Potter lore. There are famous locations to see and even secret rooms never featured before. It has hidden rooms and plenty of easter eggs to discover. The game does a great job of capturing the atmosphere and charm of the Harry Potter books, with faithful recreation of iconic locations, familiar characters and references, and a rich lore that expands on the original canon. Another tiny detail that I liked about the game is that it changes seasons, so that you can feel the magic and beauty of Hogwarts during the whole year. As for the problems, I barely encountered any. I had to restart the game once because an object has become non-interactive and I needed to use it in the puzzle, but aside of this, the game didn't have any problems on me. I played the game with ray tracing on and on a good PC, but beware that I've read many reviews that complain about performance issues. Maybe they were a problem when the game was released, but at least for now, many months later after the release, I haven't stumbled upon performance issues. Also for those heavy into collecting, on the map you will find Merlin Trials, which are puzzles, ancient magic hotspots, treasure walls, balloon popping activities, battle arenas and astronomy tables. Another slight inconvenience I can list is that you have to wait for plants to grow and for animals to breed. I and other people see it pointless to wait 29 minutes in real life for some stuff to happen in a single player game. But overall, the game overshadows any nitpick at least in my opinion. This is a 10 out of 10 game, or at least a 9.7, 9.6, anyway, it's close to being a masterpiece or you can even consider it a masterpiece. It's a Wizarding World game, everyone has extremely high expectations and in my opinion even if we didn't get Quidditch, Dementors, Diagon Alley, London, we didn't get Chess, Exploding Snap, the Gobstone mini game, or any other tiny detail. Aside of Quidditch, which is a real bummer, the others are just nitpicks. It remains a content-rich game with a great narrative, fine-tuned gameplay, beautiful visuals, chock full of content and stuff to do, and tons of replay value. You can see that the devs were passionate and tried to make the experience as magical as possible. You can even alter the appearance of any clothing item you have, meaning that you can keep these stats of that item but make it look like any item you have collected throughout the whole game. How cool is that? You can customize your room of requirements in very detailed ways. You can see the attention to detail put into this game. This is far from a lazy game, we kinda got used to in this decade. The map is huge and filled with activities and easter eggs to find. You can use three mounts in the game, a graph horn, a hippogriff and your broom. This is a world project, you can feel that the game was made with love. Sure, the lack of Quidditch is a bummer, but it doesn't hinder me to consider it a 10 out of 10. A masterpiece. I consider it the ultimate Harry Potter game. Until the sequel will come and blow everyone's mind and take the throne of the new ultimate Harry Potter game. Sure, it lacks some stuff that the community would have liked, but even as is, the game is amazing.